What's up guys and welcome to this new video. If you don't know me, my name is Florian, I'm a certified personal trainer and my mission in here is to help you achieve your dream physique. This one has been hugely requested. When I was going through the application for the giveaway, I noticed that a lot of people were struggling with overeating or binging or or eating a lot of junk food, snacking a lot throughout the day, or simply not knowing how to stop eating too much and actually listening to their body. So I decided to give you the ultimate strategy that allowed me first to lose over 35 plus pounds in around six months when I was overweight. And I actually have a full training on that on this channel. So if you guys are actually interested in the full weight loss process, then I highly suggest you check out this video. So that was all in 2019 and like I lost the weight and never gained it back. And I started the cut at the beginning of November because I had been snacking a lot. I had been kind of overeating, emotionally eating. It was October was a tough period even before that because I was a waitress. The food was just all around all the time. Uh, and it started to show. And so it's only been three weeks and I'm really impressed with the results so far. That's why I'm sharing the strategy. I'm probably going to stay on that cut for an additional three weeks just to see what can happen. And because after that, it's like Christmas time. So I'm not going to be cutting on Christmas or counting my calories on Christmas. Thank you very much. But my point with this video is show you how replicable this strategy is and just how easy it actually becomes to lose weight once you have the right strategy that works for your body. And I'm pretty sure that if it worked for me, it's going to work for you as well. Right, so now that I have your attention, let's get straight into it, how to stop overeating. Right, so let's get straight into how to stop overeating and finally lose the weight. There are multiple reasons as to why you may be overeating right now, but luckily there are also a bunch of solutions that I'm going to share with you, as was well my weirdly effective tip and kind of secret, I guess, not so much of a secret, I, I keep talking about it, but that I've used multiple times in the past because as a waitress, as I said, I used to snack and eat a lot during my shift. And you know, I would try a little bit of everything and well, I wasn't necessarily hungry. It's just because the food was around. So I used that tip and it completely stopped me from overeating and from snacking all throughout my shift. So yeah, that's however, quick mention to the fact that it is not preventing me from eating yummy food as you can see i had pancakes like a few days ago well this this picture is from summer because strawberries but you get the idea right so let's think about why are you overeating right now one of the main causes i've found is like due to strong emotions so that's what we call emotional eating maybe you're eating because you're bored because you're stressed out because you're happy sad there are a bunch of emotional triggers out there so you really want to ask yourself, why do you feel like eating right now? Why do you are you craving something right now, even though you are absolutely not hungry? Sometimes you want to eat because you're hungry and then go for it, you know? But sometimes you feel like eating, but just it's like maybe kind of eating your feelings away as well. Habits can also lead you to overeat. Uh, let's say that every single time that you go make yourself a coffee, you grab a biscuit. This can quickly add up. Again, quick mention, I always have a biscuit with my afternoon coffee. Like this is a non-negotiable. This is one of my favorite biscuit, favorite food. And this is something that's easily fitting my like daily macros. So I would not like, it's all about balance, you know? Uh, but that's also another trigger to be aware of. And then another reason which may not sound obvious is because you are currently right now on a diet and restricting way too much. Uh, let's say that you are avoiding biscuits. Uh, a great example, a, a friend of mine was telling me about that, about the fact that she was not like on specific diets. She was not like they took away, she used, they took away my biscuits with my coffee. I couldn't, I couldn't um, eat them. And the fact that I was like forbidden to eat them, I just could not stop thinking about them. So if you're restricting weight too much, it can first of all lead to like binges later at night or the next day. Um, and only to restrict even more the next and then you know been there done that but that creates like a cycle of binging and then restricting and then binging again and then over restricting so you know this could also be a reason uh, so the goal is really to be first aware of why you're overeating in order to manage it effectively a quick disclaimer I wanted to talk about uh, if you think you are suffering or if you are suffering from an eating disorder um, skip this video and speak to someone qualified, like who can truly help you out. I've been there. 
And this type of video, I don't think is going to be very helpful over actually speaking to an ED professional. So do yourself a favor. And if you want to talk to me about it, please do. I'm always here to support you. However, go see someone who is actually a professional and can help you out. Right, let's talk about emotional eating. It's a very real thing and there's nothing to like be ashamed of because everyone does it. I do it too and very happily. Think about a birthday celebration or any time, Christmas, I was mentioning Christmas. If you feel happy, you've got people you love around, of course, you're just going to get that piece of cake. Like for Christmas, I, I'm really looking forward to have that dinner with my family. My brother's coming back. We're all going to be the five of us. And like, it's the 24th and I love it. Like I cook with my mom. She does most of the job, but you know, I entertain. And and I just love both the, the, the preparation, the anticipation and then eating together. And it's something that I'm really looking forward. And that's 100% emotional eating because I know it's not supporting of my goals. But I also know that right now I'm really enjoying that and there's nothing I better be doing, okay? So there is absolutely no issue with that. And let's say, for example, that you've decided to track your daily intake. That's something I do as well right now because I'm back on the cut. And if I do, so for example, Sunday, sometimes we actually, like Sunday is the day we celebrate birthdays. So if your birthday was during this week, we're going to have like a celebration cake on Sunday. That's how some people um work that's how we work uh, so that i know i'll be like okay so i'm gonna have like a cake that afternoon and that's great i'm excited to get to that party let me pl like plan things around so maybe i have a lighter breakfast or lighter lunch um that way it won't like i won't go overboard with my calories or maybe i'm gonna be like you know what i can actually go overboard with my calories today so let's do that. You know, you have different approach, depends on your goals, depends on how committed you are, depends on how flexible you're willing to be. Uh, but you know, that's, that's how I do it. Like yesterday, my dad out of the blue bought stuff from the bakery. And so I was like, it was not planned and I had to work around it, but I made it work. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I still didn't skip any meal. I just worked around it. But Let's talk about other emotions uh, in which you are going to use food as a, another mechanism. So emotions such as stress, boredom, sadness, anger. These are times when we like feel like eating, but we don't want, like, it's going to lead to overeating. Uh, so here's my process. First of all, I identify the trigger. Then I become aware of my emotion. And that's when I find a healthy alternative to not tr that's not the word I'm looking for not treat the emotion but just let it sit with me and re like sit with it rather and and just process it instead of eating to avoid it and distract myself you know because at the end of the day this is going to come back as soon as I'm done eating plus the shame and like every negative emotion you may all feel from overeating so the first thing to do is be mindful of what specific triggers of what specifically triggers the urge to eat that way you can anticipate them and figure out what you'll do when it happens. Um, that way, instead of like turning to food immediately, you want to identify the strong emotions that you are feeling and ask yourself if you are actually hungry, but you'll know that most likely you're not. In that case, you're just using food as a coping mechanism. So if you are, the goal is to be like, okay, so how can I soothe myself without using food? Maybe it's going to talk, go for a walk or taking a hot shower, taking, talking to a friend, talking to a therapist, engaging in your favorite hobby. My favorite one is going to be journaling. When I'm angry, when I'm sad, um, when I'm stressed out, I will turn to journaling or talking to a friend because or going for a run, actually, because that's the way I process my emotions, the healthy way, instead of what I used to, which was eating. Like, I've known, even this year, I've known periods when I would I was bored or I was sad and I would just eat all day long without being hungry. And I knew how awful I would feel. Like, it was a lot of bread and it would make me feel, like, kind of bloated. I, I just, it, I would feel heavy and I would just not feel good, right? I would just have this spike of like sugar and then like completely lethargic it wasn't fun so I know how it feels like but I was like okay I need to find a healthy mechanism I know I'm bored I know I'm stressed out let's find something else to do right 
Because while food may help you feel better in the moment, it will only temporarily distract you. Um, so the annoying feeling will come back. So better treat it now um, than having it coming back. And if you actually like bottle it up, it may actually be even worse when it comes back, you know? So, you know, work with it now. It's uncomfortable, but I mean, better be done with it as soon as possible. Right, now let's talk about, you know, the snacking habits or whatever habits it may be. You know, maybe it's um, grabbing an extra whatever at lunch. Um, But, you know, there's always a way around it. So I think... If you've seen my content, you know that I'm a huge habit girl. I love that so much. I love books that talk about like developing habits and like however the the brain works uh, when it comes to habit. But while you can't break habits, sorry, the like title was a bit misleading here. You can easily change them, easily change them. And this is how a habit loop works. First, you have a craving. No, first you have a cue, sorry. Then you have the craving. Then you have the routine, which is the actual action in itself. And then you have the reward. So the only two things you actually have like a huge, you can have a huge impact on and actually work with is the cue and then the reward. So first thing first, we're going to think about the cue. Figure out what your cue for snacking or whatever is or overeating is. It could be a specific time. It could be a context. It could be an object. It could be a person. Find the cue. Ask yourself, why am I grabbing a, a biscuit right now? Is it because I'm, is it because I always do it, like eat that with a coffee? Then, okay, how could I change that? Maybe I could grab an apple instead, uh, you know, or maybe I could, I don't know, whatever would feel rewarding at the time. Maybe when I check my, I, I can also quickly check my emails or quickly check my Instagram, you know? It can be a different type of, of, satisfaction or a different type of habit it doesn't have to be the same thing or maybe instead of eating chips while watching tv or studying or working you can make yourself a cup of tea or you can just actually fully focus on studying and not eat anything Uh, maybe instead of reaching out for the ice cream when you feel sad which again is kind of the emotional eating we're talking about journal about it or call a friend you know for every single like snacking habits that you know you have because you know you have them like you can pretty much tell when you're snacking because you're snacking and not because you're hungry. So you want to figure out what's the cue. Is it a specific time? You know, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and then um, I'll talk about my reward system in a minute, as I said, uh, that way I'll, I'll be able to explain to you, like, which is my weird trick uh, to stop overeating and snacking as well. But you want to find the cue and then you want to ask yourself what, re- we'll talk about the reward in a second, but ask yourself what the reward for not for replacing the habits could be so for example if you like what would be the reward from for grabbing an apple instead of a biscuit with your coffee and by the way if you are actually in a calorie deficit like bringing like getting one biscuit over an apple would be like exactly like kind of the same calories depending on what type of biscuit what type of apple and the size and everything but you get the idea uh so this one would be more about like having something nutrient dense anyway now, now I want to talk about like a very physiological response to overeating, binging, snacking, all of that. If you're far from giving your body what you need, uh, just to like just to stay alive, just to function properly at the bare minimum, then of course your body will fight back and will try to to finally get what what it needs from you. It will go into survival mode, so it will first of all lower your metabolism, so you spend less energy at rest and overall throughout the day which by the way will make lo- will make weight loss more and more difficult but it can also uh, increase your cortisol le- level so you'll feel more stress and it also holds on to fat so if right now you're on a highly restrictive diet and you know that you're stuck in the cycle of eating way too little restricting food and eating like as healthy food as you can or to binge later because you absolutely are starving and then come back cut back even more the next day then let's talk about what to do i've been in that cycle many many times i highly recommend you go on the nasm body weight calculator because it will give you exactly like It will give you a good approximation of what your body actually needs to maintain it. And then if you want to lose weight, I want you to calculate a 10 to 15% deficit. Not more. That's the deficit I'm on right now. 
and you've seen the results like it's it's great i'm really happy with the results and actually when i have a smaller deficit that's when i lose the more fat i want to say weirdly enough but that's not weird at all um and since i'm losing fat and not water when i get back to my maintenance and don't gain it back and so on and so forth so you don't really need a big deficit to lose weight you just need a healthy deficit so your body actually feels safe enough to drop the fat instead of holding on to it because it went into survival mode now i wanted to talk about my reward system this is like my weird trick that worked every single time i wanted to implement a new habit especially stop snacking or overeating uh, so as you can see this is all in my notes app so it's really like anyone can do it uh, so remember when we identified the cues and decided what to do instead? Well, we want to pick a reward to motivate us to actually do the right thing. So as I said, like I wrote just context, but I already told you that I used to be a waitress and that meant that food was everywhere and I would snack especially on bread and butter. Like this were my favorite. And then of course you had like um, the, the, the dessert guy who would like give me a few things like, oh, you should try that biscuit. Oh, I've just made that. Do you want some? Um, you know, it was easy to 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 eat all throughout my shifts. Uh, but I noticed how, especially overeating on bread, like I noticed quickly how bad it would make me feel. Uh, so I decided to use that reward system because I love buying stuff. And I was giving myself permission. Like this is kind of girl math, right? If I work for it, it's basic. Like, and if one workout equal, equal one, euro for example at the end of the day it's basically free and it really motivated me to hold on um on the snack and like finally reach my target intake for example uh but yeah this is how i would write it on my phone oops sorry this is how i would write it on my phone and really having a clear wish list right after that uh, for example new running shoes and new workout app feed so better like earphones and i would have the price on on the one that pick or the link uh, or the pictures and it was really motivating to see like every day i would write the date and then for example if i had done one workout and no snacking i would write two euros if i had done just no snack snacking one euro if i had done the three three euros like it's basically up to you how much each of the right habit is uh, but if you're like me and you love buying stuff, then that's going to be a good enough reason. Speaking of strong reasons, you need strong whys as well. Um, because now that we know why we're snacking too much, why we're overeating, we want to also talk about mindset for a second. Because for every goal that you, ha you have, even if it's um, stop overeating, you actually need to have a strong set of highly emotional reasons as to why you want to reach these goals, especially in the health and fitness sphere. You can't do something just for the sake of doing it. It's not going to work long term. So connect it, for example, with your weight loss goals or connect it with your fitness goals um, and connect as like find as many strong slash emotional reasons as possible. Write them down and make sure to read them as often as you can, especially when you feel like you're going to snack or like there are days when I'm like, I'm on a cut, right? So there are days when I'm like, maybe I didn't eat enough today. Um, maybe I could like just for today do like a, a, a maintenance day and it happens like sometimes it does happen and that's when I have to be like no I've got to be strong enough I know I'm eating enough I'm just eating in a small like deficit it's only been three weeks there's no like I, my body is doing fine I'm still strong I'm running fast like everything's okay so I have to remind myself of my whys of why I'm doing that uh, and mostly it's related to showing you what's possible. So that's great that you are one of my biggest reasons, guys, out there uh, as to why I'm doing like all of that and why I'm pushing myself. Um, so, yeah, find strong reasons. And yeah, there you have it. That's the process of how I finally stopped myself from overeating and how you can do that, too. So you can lose the weight in 2024, because obviously we are in November right now. So it's not going to happen in a month. And if losing 35 plus pounds of fat in less than six months is something like without starving yourself, without giving up on your favorite food, without spending hours on the treadmill, and most importantly, without gaining it all back after the process is over, is something you're interested in, then I highly recommend that you book a call with me below. And we will see if you're the right fit, if I can help you because I don't work with everybody. And then we'll get you started. If it doesn't work, if you haven't lost the weight, then I will refund you in full. This is how confident I am. 
in my program. That's it for today. A lot of value. I dropped again and I'm pretty sure this is going to help a lot of you out there because I've noticed so many people asking me, how do I stop overeating? How do I stop myself from snacking so much? Why am I always attracted to junk food? So I hope it's going to answer a lot of your questions. If you have any additional questions, drop them in the comments. I always love to answer them. And you know, like, share, subscribe, like share it with someone who you know could benefit from watching that. Uh, and that's pretty much it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.